uh, Christopher <clears throat> Rosen with Gold Derby. I'm so pleased to be joined here by Janty Yates, an Oscar winner for the first Gladiator, and David Crossman, an Oscar nominee this year with Janty for Napoleon. And you guys are back together again here for Gladiator 2, uh, Ridley Scott's epic <clears throat> new film. Uh, Jandy, I want to start with you. you. I think you've worked with Ridley for more than 25 years, maybe, or almost 25 years at this point. <laughs> God, is it that long? <laughs> I think it has been. Uh, when you first heard, you know, Gladiator 2 is, like, officially going to happen, I mean, what were your initial thoughts getting back into that world? Well, I didn't believe it. Okay. Simple as that. <laughs> I thought, we can't be doing another one. <laughs> then I read the script. They just, the minute you believe anything, the script is in your inbox. <laughs> and that's when you think you might be having to start work on that project, really. And then sometimes that doesn't even happen. But mm -hmm. I was actually delighted with the script. I thought it was magnificent. And uh, it wasn't... In a way, it was nicely derivative, but it was not derivative at all in other ways. And there are so many other plots going on, you know, many stories being told. Um, it was just very exciting, very exciting indeed. Thrilled to bits, in fact. <laughs> David, I, I know you uh, wor didn't work on the first film, obviously, but I know you do the, the, the military costumes, right? And you worked on Napoleon as well. I guess coming in here for Gladiator 2, as someone who didn't work on the first one in that capacity, like what, like what did you see in the first one that you thought you could improve upon in the second one, or kind of how did you approach the project? The thing is, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go around saying, <clears throat> oh yeah, I'm going to improve that. I've seen the first one. I'm going to do this better. It's not, it's not the, the no, but the first one's a, the first one's a great film, and it's like you know, and I remember it at the time. I thought that looks amazing. The whole opening looks amazing. So first of all, you've got to try and equal that haven't you and then <clears throat> and then you just want to put your own stamp on certain things or just try and make some of that film you know something about your your work I suppose but um but it's not a competition <laughs> I wasn't trying to make things look better or anything it was just you just wanted it to but he did but you just wanted to make it look uh, nice mm. You've got so, that so nice Jen, wallpaper. Said, I like that wallpaper. Yes, we love that's from you. I'm so glad you like it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Jenny, you said he did make it better. What do you? How do you think he did? I guess, like in that capacity. Oh my God, I can't. I had never done anything to do with war or battles or building armor or anything. I'd just done, you know, films that were normal. Mm. <laughs> so. I was completely as green as green could be. And uh, I was doing things like, I can't remember the technical term, but the part on the helmet that was up there, I thought looked ridiculous. So I brought it down to look like a baseball cap. <laughs> and so he altered that. But also he made my Praetorians or the Praetorians look spectacular with beautiful, beautiful embellishment and gold and silver are added and also I had only something like I don't know 12 or 15 gladiators to create and he had 150 so <laughs> his workload was huge he also the uh, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> the cuirasses they're not called cuirasses <clears throat> in the legionaries are they the segmentata the, the segmentata that's right that begins with L doesn't it Lorica, Lorica yeah Lorica um, only went three quarters of the way around in my film. Yeah, but that's a film economy, and I think what we did, I think, we'd, all right. So we did do, we did because this gladiator is about twenty. We did it it's proper. about twenty we odd years later. So we did two styles of nice Roman helmet that would have existed at the time. We think. And so I thought those came out very well. They did. The armour, because they were kind of cloakless Roman soldiers, so it had to be a complete <laughs> body armour. We did more <laughs> we did more chainmail because there was tons of chainmail worn by the Roman army at the time. So my friend Pierre Bohanna developed a, a moulded chainmail so that we could make it in sheets and make it into tunics because as we discovered on Kingdom of Heaven 20 odd years ago, making chainmail is very difficult. Um, Especially in plastic. The, the Praetorians kind of had a sort of different shape. They had different breastplates. They had a, they had a, a cavalry helmet w we added. We found an example of one that had these two serpents on it, so we added the serpents to the top, and so we sort of decorated them a bit more. We put the 
the heads of the emperors. There was, a, there was, yeah, there was things, you know, that were... But I suppose you're, you're sitting in the kind of cosy knowledge because you know what the first gladiator looks like, so you can, you can use that as a kind of springboard to what you're mm -hmm. going to do. And because yeah. I've, I've worked with Ridley a few times with Janty as a, like, Janty supervisor and stuff and doing military for Janty before, and so I... In my mind, I, I know what Ridley likes. We did Kingdom of Heaven together, which was a huge thing. And um, so you, you kind of feel, not confident, but you, you have a, a bit of assurance about what you're doing, I suppose. I was talking to, I got to talk to Arthur or Max before the production designer. He was saying how Ridley is so like fastidious and his attention to detail is just absolutely off the charts. And I guess I'm assuming that's like you probably both experience that as well in terms of the costumes. Is he that is fair? Very, he's very costume um, aware, very costume friendly in actual fact. And very often, for example, in the first one, he really did the sketch that created Tiger's helmet because he wanted it to be like a French fireman's helmet. <laughs> and uh, so we built on that. And, you know, he. I think we have a certain amount of trust now, but always I will show him he will always improve on it he's he's very very costume costume aware and i think david probably um he was very military aware as well um david can talk about his approach with him yeah please david well um Yes, he's he's very. I think, but I think you sort of know what to put in front of him in a funny way. You kind of know. I, I you know what he's going to like. I don't. I don't know the man well, but I know him well enough. I think to put certain things in front of him, which he he'll, he'll like and he'll comment on. So we're, you're trying to do all the nice elements that he's always referring to in in reference that he's bringing up. Anything from chainmail to scale armor to anything that has that kind of almost romantic feel, I suppose, from a from an art reference perspective or so you you're not you're not just trying to diligently do military detail you're trying to you know give it that extra edge of you know so it looks very cool as well as being you want a bit of correctness but you also want it to look you know a certain stylized way i suppose yeah mm -hmm. Jenny, you get to do a lot of like I, like we said like I think it's like a great like the the sequel goes places the original didn't I think and I was like, one of the characters I really loved obviously was Macronus played by Denzel Washington I think his entire his robes and all of these things are great and I think he really embraces that the, the costume as a performer right I think that becomes like very much part of his performance so I guess like for you in designing his wardrobe and the character's clothes like you know where did you start and how was that like. Yeah, like, what were your... How'd you kind of do it, basically? <laughs> well, I just got this sewing machine and this... You no, know, Basically, <laughs> Ridley is a great um, advocate of painters and he loves Orientalism from the 19th... or turn of the 19th century, 1900s. And their depictions of men who were not necessarily Moors or... Africans, but just their their costumes were was a very good start for our, our feeling for Macronus. But actually, where we went was with the guards that um, were painted by Jerome and Benjamin Constant and Alma Tadema. Basically, the wonderful huge belts that they wore with a scimitar in it the turbans, the big flowing robes that they still wore with <clears throat> big wristlets and um, more weapons and wonderful tunics, all in fabulous colours. They were huge inspiration. Um, and then when we came to fit Denzel, he wore everything so well that we just ran and ran with it and so the second fitting we just were able to say well you're going to be doing this we went through the script absolutely line by line and um, hmm. we went well you'll be outside but you'll be under an awning so maybe this would look better then and he also had a lot of beautiful beautiful wraps as well as well as his togas he had these very bejeweled and encrusted 
sort of throws, I suppose, and if they weren't jewel encrusted, they were very beautifully embroidered all the way through. And I bought those mainly um, in Milan and in uh, Paris. Um, they were original 1920s or 1910 pieces. Um, and then the fact that he wore the earrings gives, gives me such joy it just really made me so happy because his head and his face is so powerful anyway. Um, the earrings just gave him that flair. We tried turbans on. Ridley didn't want a turban. Denzel didn't want a turban. But in actual fact, with his hair slightly salt and pepper and these earrings and these huge necklaces, you know, just in close up, he looked so powerful. It's it's great. I think it's a great performance. It's like one of my he's just one of my faves in the film and just one of his in general. I think it's so great. Yeah, the he's look great. Is, isn't the look he? is fascinating. It's just yeah. amazing. I think it's such a great look. Uh, yeah. David, I think uh, Jandy, I mentioned before, like hundreds of like I feel it's like hundreds of, of of soldiers, and I just the scale of this is mind boggling to me. I guess like how do you <laughs> like I, I know like you said you did Kingdom of Heaven obviously and like it, Napoleon. It seems like there were hundreds and hundreds of soldiers that you probably had to. Uh, dress as well. I mean, how do you kind of wrap your arms around the scale like this? Like, it just is, I, I can't, as a layman, I can't understand it. So, like, how do you do it, basically? <clears throat> you you start with the first, the first, you, you, whatever the highest number is that you've got to do, then you start with those first helmets and first armor, because they're going to be the thing that takes the longest to make. So, um, you know, we had, we developed a few helmets to begin with, and those were digitally modelled, and then we sent those off, and then we spent the time trying to find people that could make... Because we only had... We didn't have that much... We had about two or three months, I think, by the time the film was actually green-lit and we could actually spend money and do it. And then um, that ha you had to make those samples, then you have to go into mass production. So it's, it's really tight. And then it's got to ship to Morocco as well, which is one of the... It's not the easiest country to ship a lot of things to from all over the world so it's um so there's all those pressures and it has to be in morocco at least three weeks before shooting because you've got to fit all these people you've got to prefit hundreds of people so basically that's getting rid of breaking a month down. you know at least a month off and it's still got to be broken down <clears throat> so you're breaking down things while you're fitting things so yes it's a big logistical thing and you don't want to you, you know, you just don't want it to be rubbish because it's so... Because you don't want to be a you know, kind of martyr to the logistics of it. You want it to look good as well. <laughs> and it's... Um, so, yes, it's difficult. Yeah. But, uh, you know, <laughs> and it's so, so any changes are kind of... You know, they just kill you. You know, you need to sort of... And at the same time, you, you're, you're more focused doing your principal work. We had someone called Jan Paolo who Janty and I were both using for leather items, and he was making sort of amazing cuirasses and woven armour for Lucius and He's all that kind of thing. Ever. And I think that's that's a big, you know, that's quite a big element of this film is Jan Paolo's leather work. And, um, mm -hmm. and then we were able to make kind of um, on the computer elements to go on all those breastplates and... Um, it was a nice kind of mixture of two technology, you know, traditional work and new technology. So that was good, but yes, the the mass. So then you have a good team as well who go out there in advance and they receive all the things. They make sure it all gets aged and broken down, and they're kind of processing everything. But it's a big, it's a big operation. Yeah, I mean, like one of the things that blows me away about this film and, and Ridley's in general, too, obviously, is that like the scale is so big, and a lot of times when you watch a movie, like you're like, oh, like just <clears> off. To the side, there's nothing happening. But this, especially because he's like working like with 12 cameras, it feels like that you guys have to have everyone like at any point could be in the shot, right? Or it seems yeah. like, or, or just like no, you know, and every, it feels true. like it's true. It is just such a world created. Like you're actually like going back in. I know this sounds stupid, but it feels like you're like going back in time when you're watching the film. Because I'm like, how did they kind of do this? And I imagine that makes your jobs really rewarding because you get to do such great work, but also probably really difficult in terms of like making sure everyone is like buttoned up. Yeah. There's there's no back of back of camera. There's no back of set anymore. You can't sort of just get away with anything. Just slide it in to add to the crowd because he's got a camera on Steadicam right there. <laughs> you know. So you have a larger team and they're with every camera. So they'll they'll follow everything around or they'll they'll work out what everybody's doing and then they'll just keep they'll just stick with those cameras and whatever they're shooting mm -hmm. that day and 
there's just endless stump men with their radios kind of on their belts or on their phones or you know it's all that kind of thing a helmet's mm. kind of all over the place or they've water left bottles it. down you know, there's France. water bottles watches all that sort of thing you know so it's just a yeah monitor 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 all of these things they just followed all the time to keep an eye on things the other thing I love and I guess we got to wrap up here but just last note is like obviously Ridley has his pace of making these films is, I mean, prolific, right? Like, you got, literally, <laughs> Napoleon was just out, like, last year. It was a great success. Obviously, you guys are Oscar nominees for it. Gladiator 2 is here. I mean, does that, for, for Janty, for you, like, because you've worked with him so much, does the, the pace actually help you, like, as well? Like, does that keep the energy up almost, I guess, knowing that, like, this is going to be, like, the rep, like, so fast and furious with him? I'm so used to it now. We're always sort of, falling over ourselves because nothing's ready and you know he's oh he's just no that's not that's not in a week that's tomorrow you know but I think it's worse for Arthur Arthur Max to be honest because he has to really just I mean how how he does it in with so much patience you just employ more people you employ a day set dress setting setting um and an evening dress setting and a weekend team you know you just have to throw money at it really um <laughs> but no i love ridley's pace the fact that he's 87 makes me feel <laughs> like i don't have one iota of energy left compared to him he's extraordinary <laughs> he's he's going to he's turning 87 this next week Crazy. I feel like he definitely has more energy than me, is, and he's much. Exactly. Like, That's just the most awful yeah. situation to be in, Dave. <laughs> uh, Jandy Yates, obviously yeah. Oscar winner for the first Gladiator. David Crossman, Oscar nominee this year with Jandy for Napoleon. Uh, Gladiator Two is their new film. Thank you so much for doing this. It was great chatting with you both about this project. Thank you, Chris. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Bye bye.